Hey everybody, it's me, Andrew. Get out into nature and tune in for yourself. Resonate with the Earth's electromagnetic field via 432 hertz, the universal frequency. Balance out psychologically and emotionally and further strengthen your brain and your heart's coherence as well. Get a plant-based diet going for yourselves today and nurture yourself right back into life. We are literally herbivores in our nature. Further balance out your physical body's pH level and to get with alkalinity. Then you can generate some static electricity. Send me some love telepathically. Send attention to your mind and set intention to communicate. That is all there is to telepathy. You are now tuning in to great days. So today I wanted to go over, um, let me see. I guess censoredness and accept acceptance, acceptance, uh, letting things just be, right? So you can come into it an ease, uh, maybe peace as well, right? So let's get into this. Um. So. Beginning, we can start with. when there's conflections that arise in life, right? <clears throat> Which is all the time, this happens all the time, uh, because these are just various different things that can conflict with the way that you like to keep yourself. Um, there can be turmoil, right? There's always turmoil that's going to arise. Um, or there's always things that are going to happen which are going to lead you to be turmoiled, right? Conflicting in this. Uh, so what I wanted to go over is how to let these flow a little bit more so that you don't have to fall into any over excessive turmoiling within yourself, right? And this is getting into the whole thing as, of... Um, responding rather than than reacting to things right uh, so reactions are are very unconscious in their nature respond responding is very conscious right so you definitely want to uh, shift from re re reaction to response this is simple uh really all it takes is observing yourself you have to observe yourself first and foremost in order to be able to shift from a reactive state to a responsive state right so there's things that are taking place and uh you can let everything hit you around like um like air hockey right you know you kind of every it's getting hit around uh, you're kind of reacting to everything that's taking place, right? And 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 you can get uh kind of thrown around. And and this is gonna happen. It's kind of like uh you find yourself reacting to everything, right? And it gets very very draining, or it is very draining to literally just be reacting to everything right uh because it's unconscious in its nature and the very draining itself is unconscious you're you're like falling unconscious you know when your phone is drained of its charge or its energy it dies and you can't use it right it's the same thing when you're reacting to everything you're falling unconscious you're being drained of life energy so you fall dead, but the moment that you begin responding, there's more of a um, there's more of a conscious momentum to it, and this is what you're looking for. You want the response rather than reaction, right? Uh, <clears throat> so you got to observe yourself. You're definitely reacting to everything. 
just observe and the observation in itself that's taking place can literally lead to to just naturally shifting into a responsive state or a conscious state right because the observation itself is the consciousness that you're looking for the expansion of awareness that uh shifts things on multiple different levels or aspects which then brings about response rather than reaction to anything uh so once you are able to literally shift into responsiveness then uh you can ease because as you begin to develop more consciousness or expand and be more responsive to the things happening in life then you can easily begin to understand things with more clarity and when you are able to understand things with more clarity they don't pose any threat because nothing does pose a threat ever in life uh once you once you can reach a certain level of self realization you easily understand the wisdom behind that nothing is a threat more so that uh life's more of a drama anyway right and things should be observed it's kind of like a movie that you're just watching or everybody's watching the body experience the bodily experience the mental experience at least these are just like film you know you can literally just witness them and uh be completely free of attachment from them so that they go on doing whatever they do and uh you can just be in uh completely detached state of observation right and this is a great liberation in itself so the moment that you begin to understand things with more clarity due to the uh responsiveness that has shifted there's an ease that grows in you that ease is uh synonymous with peace as well right peace and ease they're literally the same word um so peacefulness it, it, it's definitely within you already peacefulness is within everybody the whole thing is that you aren't able to respond enough or you're not conscious enough to be able to experience the deep states of bliss at the core or the deep states of peace at the core of your being right cuz you're getting caught in all different in all sorts of uh, unconscious layerings and what not conditions and programs for example um but the moment that you start to dissolve these away with more consciousness then you can easily begin to experience the deeper realities which includes absolute peace um easefulness this is where you can really find the flow of things you're in the flow everybody is but you can come deeper you can uh fall deeper into the flow consciously right um and and the moment that you start being more responsive you can start opening up your understanding and the moment that you start opening up your understanding the moment that uh um, you can begin to understand and that actually leads to the deeper experience which is completely beyond the bodily the mental right um because it literally becomes pure witnessing so that literally or easily leads to an easefulness things are just going right everything's just happening of itself everything's just happening you're just watching it like a movie right uh but there's no body there's no mind to be not to be to be and not to be the duality of it 
The witnessing is what you are. This is what Shakespeare is on, right? To be and not to be. This is how he was able to create so many characters because he was nobody. He was not, he was no body. He was not any particular body, no individual body. He was no body. This is why he was able to create so many bodies or so many characters within himself. And this made him a great writer because he was nobody. He was nobody. He didn't exist. That's the key to it. Everybody has that within them. Because that's what gives way to the whole thing. Um, so come into the easefulness. This is very, very simple. The easefulness is there. The peace. The immense flow state. Effortless effort. Wu Wei. It's all there. Already. You just have to shift your attention, shift your attention, shift your consciousness so that you come into a certain state of realization. And within that certain state of realization, the experience is immensely changed. You don't need to stay on in the bodily experience if you don't want to. You don't need to stay in the mental experience if you don't want to. There is systems that keep you there, but the moment that you start to understand how to shift perception, then you, you're liberated. You don't have to stay in any one dimension or you can't even stay in one dimension. So easefulness. Uh, everybody's at ease, everybody's in bliss, is what I'm trying to say. It's just that uh, there's various different acts, right? Characterizations, conditionings, fashionings that we've dressed ourselves up with as blank canvases and uh, not living within the absolute truth or that absolute blissfulness at the core of the being is just another conflection. You're conflicting yourself out of being able to experience that easefulness. But once you once you've experienced once you experience it, then you can just be in the ease and everything is just easeful, it's just happening. It's an eternal flow. It's the Tao. Whatever you want to call it. Right? It can be God, Tao, the universe, anything, spirit. But it's all the same thing for everybody. It's no different. But it is different as well. This is why we have so many different names for it. Right? Uh, and it's, it can be a completely different experience for everybody. But there's also one oneness to it, which is the interconnectedness of it and the interdependent nature included in the designing and or the coding. Uh, <clears throat> so accept how things are so that you can be more responsive. Observe in that accepting, in that acceptance, right? So you accept how things are, and then this can allow you to observe more. And the moment that you observe more, you can be more responsive. And this is more conscious. Consciousness and responsiveness are the exact same thing or are synonymous with one another. Unconsciousness and reaction are synonymous with each other. So if you're reacting to everything happening in your life, if you're acting to everything, 
you're unconscious, you're unaware, and this can also lead to misunderstanding. This is why it can also uh, have you within fear states of vibration, confusing states. But the moment that you're responsive, there's also consciousness, and that's understanding, that's clarity, there's light, so you can see its illumination. And then you can start understanding more. And the more that you understand, the more that you can find a centeredness. And the centeredness is all you really need because that is the centeredness. If you've ever been in the center, your center, then you know how vital it is for anything, for everything. Right? When you're out of center, you feel like uh, you don't even want to live sometimes. Everything's just in, it, completely miserable. It's because you're out of your center. You don't. You misunderstand. Everything is very dreadful. But then there comes a point where you find centeredness and you can't leave it. And this is where the liberation comes. That's where there's no more suffering because you fallen into the centeredness. Suffering doesn't exist anymore. Pain doesn't exist anymore. Because you understand what it is only from the centrality, centricity. It's very simple. But there was times where you would fall into, out of, a centeredness or you never even knew about a centeredness or a absolute balanced state it is miserable very miserable a lot of misery but then once again you can slowly come into that center until you can't come out of it because something just clicks once you come into that center and you stay there in the centeredness and this is the, the absolute health, the state, right? Um, <clears throat> so be easeful, you are easeful, people are easeful, everybody's peaceful, everybody is also extremely blissed but you have to shift your state of awareness so that you can come into a certain level of realization in order to be able to have the experience of that level otherwise it's just a knowledge that's being passed around right um, <clears throat> it stays philosophy if i'm here talking about at the core of being at the center in your center, there's absolute bliss, absolute peace, something beyond the physical, mental experiences, something beyond everything that you've ever experienced as an ego. It just remains philosophy because you have not had an experience that backs up the knowledge but once you do have the experience that matches with the knowledge that's being passed around, then it's no longer philosophy, but it remains a truth. But otherwise, it's just a belief, right? I believe that's tr I believe that could be true because maybe there's a crowd of people talking about it, but it's not true for one individual because they haven't had that experience. They haven't felt it. They haven't experienced it in totality 
So the moment that you do have the experience that matches with the knowledge, then it's no longer a belief, it's no longer a lie, but it's absolute truth because you've fully, totally experienced it, right? So the bliss is there at the core, at the center, the peace, ease, everything is there. Everybody is there as well in oneness which is the center, the center is one, nonness, you, you're non-existent, not to be, one and zero, to be one, not to be zero, binary coding, <laughs> the designing of the universe, um, but Allow yourself to be blissful. People do a lot of things to keep themselves out of bliss. That's already there. Irradiating. The only thing is that you have to shift the awareness once again. We do a lot of crazy things. Just to... Uh, keep ourselves from being able to experience that, right? Uh, we do a lot of stuff just to prolong that inevitability of dissolving into that oneness, right? It's going to happen inevitably when you die as an ego. You dissolve away into it. But you don't have to wait. You can do it now. You can do it while you're healthily alive. You can do it in your teens, you can do it in your youth, you can do it in your adolescence, you can do it in your uh, 40s. It's just, uh, that's the ego, it's, it's kind of turned on by struggling out of the state of bliss, right? Because this is the nature of the ego, but... Uh, if you just let it be, right, stop getting so entangled, you're easily going to be able to shift your awareness into the state of blissfulness. And that's where you can have the experience of absolute understanding, right? Unconditional understanding, unconditional love as well. which is beyond the ego, transcendence of it. That's going to be it for today's video. I do thank everybody for watching. Once again, peace out. One love. Have a great evening.